And one of the people immediately coming to Phil Robertson's defense, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Good evening, Governor. Good evening, Greta. How are you? I'm very well. Well, this is sort of an interesting debate that uh, has seized the country. I mean, even uh, Harvey, um, Harvey Levin, uh, um, Harvey, I've known Harvey for, I don't know, 20 years. He's gay. He says that uh, he supports Phil Robertson's right to say what he says, even though he disagrees. Um, but it certainly has set the country on fire. Well, yeah, it, and this is becoming a discussion now, I think, outside of the legal realm, letting attorneys decide whether it's a free speech uh, in uh, the rule of, under the rule of law or not. And now it's becoming more of a discussion within the exchange of ideas in the public and private square and in pop culture, whether we're allowed to express our personal opinions without... Um, that without threats of intimidation and mockery and criticism and loss of jobs and revenue, it, it's becoming a, a greater, bigger issue than what it started out to be um, just a few days ago. I think people will loosely use the term free speech, meaning that, you know, that all of a sudden, you know, people jump someone for saying something and that you don't jump others. I think that's sort of, that's sort of the inequity of, you know, either we're going to let people trash talk or we're not going to let people trash talk. But, but on the same token, sort of let them, you know, if the, if the market wants to uh, be such that people don't want to watch someone, so be it. Well, that's right. And that's why I say, you know, attorneys can discuss and argue whether it's a legal free speech issue or not. But um, I'm hearing a lot of people start discussing now whether uh, in our especially pop culture venues, whether we're going to be allowed without uh, threats of um, a, a lot of intimidation and loss of opportunities it to express our opinions. Do you have, I mean, it's one thing to express your opinion. Do you have any problem, uh, you know, about the manners of how he said it? I mean, we don't talk about it on television much, but if you actually read the article, there's a rather graphic and offense, at least I think, offensive description of it. If you, I mean, there, there, you know, could, there are two ways to say different things. And his, in the article, and I know he's a graphic type guy, but do you have any objection on, on the manners aspect, how he said it? I haven't read the article. <clears throat> I don't know exactly how he said it. But um, Greta, what he was doing was in response to a question about a lifestyle that he disagrees with, and yet he has said over and over again he doesn't hate the person engaging in a lifestyle he disagrees with, but he, he um, in response, he was quoting the gospel. So people who are so insulted and offended by what he said evidently are offended by what he was quoting in the gospel. So, you know, that's a whole, that's another interesting aspect in all of this. Are you surprised by Cracker Barrel, which suddenly, you know, which was appalled and apparently not so appalled now? Uh, yeah, they were appalled until they realized that, you know, the majority of Americans are saying, come on, you guys, th thicken your skin and, and, you know, quit being so um, intolerant of people expressing public opinion and private opinion. Uh, and, uh, you know, Cracker Barrel then, after just 24 hours, I guess, of considering them, what they had done to pull items of Duck Dynasties off their shelves and decided, oh, that a lot of the population is telling us that we made a mistake. Uh, it, it's kind of amazing that just within 24 hours, they, they realized that. You know, I think that they made a mistake 24 hours ago by pulling items off the shelf, reacting as they did so quickly. Governor, stay with us. We're straight ahead. The latest shots fired in that nasty fight over Christmas. We're going to talk with Governor Palin about that next. Christmas Eve is just hours away, and people are fighting over Christmas in New York. An atheist group posted a billboard on a heavily traveled bridge. The sign features a question, who needs Christ during Christmas? And the answer, nobody. And in Texas, outraged parents accusing a high school of canceling a Christmas caroling tradition. They say it's because of the religious references in the song. The school board says an ice storm canceled the caroling. And we're back with former Governor Sarah Palin, author of the brand new book, Good Tidings and Great Joy, Protecting the Heart of Christmas. And before we get to your book, Governor, I'm curious, this whole sort of, uh, uh, you know, this, this my, uh, this fight over Christmas and uh, when people are going to be able to express themselves and when they're not. Your thought. 
Well, there certainly is a war on Christmas, and it's the tip of the spear on a war of uh, even a greater issue, and that is expression of faith and being able to live out uh, the Christian faith, or no faith at all, any faith uh, that a person would choose. There certainly is that war in our culture today, and I wrote why? about that in the book. Why, why, is there, why, why do you think that war is there? I think that people are offended, it, some people, at the idea that we aren't all that. We're not the center of the universe. And we, as fallible, um, mistaken man, we should be serving something greater than self. Our world would be a, a lot healthier, more peaceful, safer place if we were all to be more selfless and serve something greater than self, i.e. our creator. And I think that that idea is really offensive to a lot of people, especially the elites who kind of control much of the media, much of politics, because they do think they're all that. They think that they are the hope, the change, the answer. They think they can create utopia when, you know, most of us who are humble enough to admit that man can't do that. We're, we're so fallen that we need a savior. We, we need something to look to for strength and hope and peace and joy. And um, a lot of us look to God for that. You know, I, I'm always surprised. I mean, there certainly is room for everybody. That's, you know, the, the, you know, so why people are jabbing each other, you know, for having a faith is beyond me. It was like, you know, there really is room, you know, to, for everybody. And yet for some time, at the, some reason at this time of the year, people decide, you know, come out and jab people. And I just don't get it. If they jab people, they waste a lot of money like that billboard. Why didn't they take the money they were going to spend on trying to offend Christians or anybody who believes in Jesus being the reason for the season? Why didn't they spend that money on helping the needy, helping the poor? Uh, I think that was a waste of resource. That well, might not be a bad idea. All right, now to your book. And I might add there's some recipes at the back of the book. It's, this, is, uh, this book has uh, a little bit of everything. Um, recipes on the back. Um, also quotes, uh, quotes from uh, President uh, Ronald Reagan and Martin Luther King. Um, but it also gets very personal. In one part of the book, you write very, about a very personal um, time in your family's life with Bristol. And you talk about you know, being able to sort of admit you're wrong. Yeah, I think that that is some of the heart of Christmas is uh, being humble enough to admit that, again, we're not all that. We don't have all the answers. In that episode that I was reflecting upon um, when Bristol came to us to tell us that she was uh, going to have a baby and Todd and I argued over uh, what should she do next. I, you know, I thought she should get married and Todd said, no, there's already been a, a, a heap of trouble piled on her plate. Let's not encourage more heaping of more trouble on her plate. We argued about it and then I realized he was right and he was right. Humbled myself and told him that and reflected upon that in the book and that again has a lot to do with that humbleness of Jesus being born in a manger and not as some lofty king who um, came down uh, amongst privilege and um, in your face kind of lecturing of everybody else and in the culture in which he was a part of and uh, much of the the spirit of Christmas has to do with being humble enough to accept that and have that childlike faith to know that it was real. What, what stood out to me in the book is that you know you, you and Todd have a disagreement and an argument about this and it's obviously from reading the book that's painful and then you write when Bristol's son arrived, he melted into our arms and melted my heart. My little girl had given life to this little boy. In less than ideal circumstances, he turned our little world upside down and for the better. Yeah, he sure did. And that was, you know, that's just... Uh, 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 just a, a small episode in our lives that the case of Bristol having the baby, but it's turned in to be part of our foundation of our family and a very important part of our life. And, you know, when I consider that people all over this country are facing such challenges, greater challenges than, uh, you know, an unwed pregnancy being a, a contribution to their family's foundation, but people facing such challenges, Greta, they, they need encouragement, they need empowerment. The book reflects a lot of how it is that we can feel encouraged and empowered again by humbling ourselves and looking to something beyond self. You know how you know how I read that? I read that is that we get ourselves all whooped up
up about problems, all whooped up, and then as they sort of unfold, and as we sort of, you know, come to terms with them, you use the term, uh, of course, showing mercy is painful, meaning that when you and, and Todd sort of, you know, worked, you know, worked it out, um, is that, you know, like, if, if we would just sort of ride through it, there's like, sometimes we make a, a bigger problem for ourselves, and in the end, we might be a little bit enriched if we, you know, at the other end of this. Yeah, we always do, I think. Uh, for the most part, when something hits us and stops our world from spinning for a moment there, uh, you know, we think that it's the end of the world. And then you can look back on the episode and realize that if you sought the greater good in that episode of life, you, you do find out that it can be used though it was in less than ideal circumstances for a greater good to, to help your family your business your community the world become a better place if you have the right perspective on what these challenges are well there's a lot more in the book people should read it about the great things that happened in wasilla around christmas as well as the, as the, the soup kitchen and everything also the merry christmas chili recipe um, that is recommended at the end anyway governor thank you very much brand new book thank you governor thank you so much merry christmas to you merry christmas